Good morning. Good morning, wait for Wesleyan Church. Oh, come on, you can do better than that. Let's get excited. Good morning, wait for Wesleyan Church. Hey, praise the Lord. Um, Isaiah had a vision, and uh, in his vision, he saw the Lord high and lifted up. And the train of the Lord filled the entire earth, the whole earth was filled with the glory of God. And that's what this song says. Let's stand and sing. We stand and lift up our hands for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down, we worship Him now. How great, how awesome is He. Together we see. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. We stand and lift up our hands, for the joy of the Lord is our strength. We bow down, we worship Him now, how great, how awesome is He, together we sing, everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, the earth is filled with His glory. The earth is filled with His glory. It's rising up. All around it's the anthem of our Lord's renown. It's rising up. All around it's the anthem of our Lord's renown. It's rising up. All around it's the anthem of our Lord's renown. It's rising up. All around it's the anthem of our Lord's renown. Together we sing, everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. Sing it out. Oh, oh yeah, Rick. That's a, that's a, that's just that. Yeah, that's what happens sometimes when you mess up a song. But aren't you glad that God's glory fills it all? Here's a great little song. Uh, we taught it to you uh, a while back. Got to see what key it's in. Just reminds us that God is good all the time. The chorus goes like this. God is good all the time. He puts a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Sing that again. God is good. God is good all the time. Put the song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, His light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. The verse goes, If you're walking through a valley and there's shadows all around, do not fear, He will guide you, He will keep you safe and sound. Because He has promised to never leave you, 
nor forsake you. And his word is true. God is good all the time. He put a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Can you testify that today? God is good all the time. Yeah. We were sinners, so unworthy, still for us he chose to die. Fill us with his Holy Spirit, now we can stand and testify. That his love is everlasting, and his mercies, they will never end. God is good. All the time, he puts a song of praise in this heart of mine. God is good all the time. Through the darkest night, his light will shine. God is good. God is good all the time. Can you say amen to that this morning? Father, thank you for your goodness, your grace, your mercy, your compassion. Your faithfulness, it never fails. Your mercies are good and true every morning. We give you praise today. Bless this time, for you certainly are good to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Before you're seated, find five people you haven't greeted yet and welcome to the service. Good morning, church. Good to see you all here today. Let's get uh, some of these announcements. We've got some important things happening. The most important thing starts tomorrow morning. What is it? VBS. Exactly right. Um, so they start there all week. Please pray for the kids and for the workers. This is not just a time of fun. This is a time when we're trying to instill God's word in these children, many of them from around the, the area. Um, we now have over 40 kids signed up and we have lots of walk-ins so um, make sure that you pray yes praise the Lord for that so make sure you pray for them um, it starts at 9 30 tomorrow workers please be here at nine o'clock and uh, those of you who have things to set up there's the setup party tonight at five o'clock is that right so uh, come here at five o'clock and uh, help get everything set up for that now because we have VBS this week there will be no Wednesday night services. So youth are canceled, adults canceled, children's program is canceled. Um, and also there will be no Wednesday night service because of the fourth. So for the next two Wednesday nights, there will be um, no services. However, what is happening tonight, 6 o'clock, the youth meeting with uh, Nick. So make sure you come youth. Um, and let's see, what else do we have here? Oh, yes. Um, the Ladies Bible Study is starting up again. The first one is going to be on July 11. There's a sign-up sheet out on the, on the Welcome Center. Um, so make sure that you do that. It's at 6.30 on July 11, and they're studying 1 Corinthians this time around. So make sure you check that out, ladies. And as always, in your pews, there are the connection cards. Uh, make sure you fill those out. Let us know what's going on. Some praises, some prayer requests, and so forth. Um, there's also a place on there to note if you want to keep it private. So you can do that and just drop them in the um, connection card slots back there as you leave today. So did I miss anything? I think I got everything everybody gave me. Stand with me if you would, and let's read our verse for life this morning. It's a short one, 
and it is very powerful for us today. So let's read it together. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Proverbs 4, 23. You know, we all know that verse, guard our hearts. And our sermon today is about our hearts, and that's the place where God resides. And our song this morning, In My Heart, There Rings a Melody. And uh, we've learned the story of this songwriter before. Um, He's an evangelist, and he was on his way to preach, and he dropped his wife and children off at the in-law's house, and then he went on. And one night during that week, the in-law's house caught fire and killed all of his family. And he got that word. But these words rang true for him because the song that we have in our heart does not come from the world. It doesn't come from our circumstances. Amen. Amen. And that's what our song tells about today. Let's take a look at the words so that when you sing them, you know what they mean. I have a song that gave me. Is that where your song came from? And it was sent from heaven above. And then in verse 2, talking about Christ who died for me, for he washed my sins away, he put within my heart a melody. Again, where is the song coming from? And then the last verse, and this is how a lot of gospel songs end. Our goal is not to have a good time in this world, is it? Our goal is to get to heaven and to sing that endless theme in glory. And I love this. He he says there, with the angels, I will sing. How would you like to join a choir and stand next to a soprano angel? Amen. I hear Jan back there giggling. She likes that idea. We're going to be singing in heaven with the angels and the other saints when we get to glory. So as we sing this, think about it. Where is your song coming from? Because if it's coming from Jesus, it doesn't matter what's happening. And that's why the songwriter could write, In my heart there rings a melody, despite the fact that the external circumstances in his life were very tragic. So sing it out this morning. From your heart, page 514, if you want the music. I have a song that Jesus gave me. It was sent from heaven above. There never was a sweeter melody. Tis the melody of love. In my heart there rings a melody. There rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Twill be my endless theme in glory, with the angels I will sing. Twill be a song with glorious harmony when the courts of heaven ring. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Amen. Amen. Remain standing. I just love the hymns, don't you? little prayer chorus as we get ready for the sermon this morning. It just says, here's my heart, Lord. A 
Let's try it together here. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Cause I am found, I am yours, I am loved, I am you, I have life, I can breathe, I am healed, I am free, here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Cause you are strong. You are sure. You are life. You endure. You are good. Always true, you are light, breaking through, here's my heart, Lord, here's my heart, Lord, here's my heart, Lord, speak what is true. You are more than enough. You are here. You are love. You are hope. You are grace. All my heart. You're everything. Here's my heart. Here's my heart, Lord. Here's my heart, Lord. Speak what is true. Here's my life, Lord. Here's my life, Lord. Here's my life, Lord. Here's my life. Speak what is true. Speak what is true. Speak what is true. That's our prayer this morning, Father. Speak your word now into our heart. Create in us that clean heart that you want. Just pray for Russ Howell this morning. Lord, we lift him before you. You know what's going on. You know the extent of all that he's facing. You're the great physician, and you can bring healing to people's lives. And we believe that over Russ today. We pray that you will touch him physically. We pray that your peace and your presence would be upon that family as they wait. And just encourage them in this moment as well. Speak to their hearts what is true, that you are good, you're everlasting, you're gracious. Bless this moment now as we look to your word, we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. You may be seated. Kids are dismissed for junior church. I like it when that happens. You put your hand in your pocket and you pull out money you didn't have. You know you had. Have you ever done that before? I just pulled out a $10 bill in my pocket. That's like... Whoever put it there, thank you, by the way. 
Appreciate that. Well, if you got your Bibles, turn to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5. We're looking at verse 8 this morning. We've been uh, on a journey here to the Sermon on the Mount, and uh, we've been taking our time here with the Beatitudes. Um, I've told you this, but I had to sign up for Medicare this year. And as uh, part of my introduction to Medicare, I had to have a wellness check. And uh, I was first asked a bunch of questions by my nurse, and some of them were rather interesting. Do you have enough to eat at home? Have you ever gone hungry? Do you need help managing money? Doesn't everyone? Uh, this one got to me. Uh, do you have trouble concentrating, remembering, or making decisions? Uh, remembering? Yeah, that left years ago. So there were questions about depression, diet, and exercise, and home safety. Question, in the past 12 months, have you fallen? And I had to answer yes to that when I did. I fell. I stepped into a hole, but I fell. But the one I really liked, I mean, I thought it was just kind of interesting, do you feel safe at home? Now, I was tempted to have a little fun with that one. <laughs> have you met my wife? You know, no, no, not really. <laughs> you guys know that's not true. I, I just, that was a funny one. Do you feel safe at home? And after the nurse, then it was the doctor's turn, and he got poked, and you got prodded, and there was more question about my, the pain level of my knee and other things. that it, They listened to my heart, to, took my blood pressure, more questions. Yeah, oh, why all these questions? And they want to get a comprehensive picture of your overall health, not just physically, but mentally, emotionally, and all these things. And thankfully... I've known that these comprehensive tests, they do save lives. A pastor leader in our region about a year ago went through a comprehensive test just like this. And some, something between the, te uh, the questions and the exam led the doctor to think that there was something not right with him. And they said, you need to make an appointment right away with a cardiologist. And he received word that the he couldn't get in for several months. And the doctor said, no, 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 you don't understand. You need to get in right away. And so they made an appointment for that week. The cardiologist listened, ordered a CT scan that day. And the next day he was in having surgery to fix a problem with his heart. Checkups are important. They address issues that need to be addressed. Our doctors talk to us about taking proper care of ourselves. We are talked to about diet and about exercise and stress and all of those important things about caring for this organ called the heart. Reader's Digest had a cute story about a doctor addressing a large audience speaking about the importance of a healthy heart. He said the foods we eat cause so much damage to our hearts. Red meats are full of steroids and dyes. Soft drinks wreak havoc on our kidneys and put stress on our heart. High trans fats diets cause blockage that harm the heart. Fast foods are loaded with additives harmful to the heart. But there's one thing that's the most dangerous food of all to the heart, and most of us has or will eat it. And then he asked the question, can anybody tell me what food it is that causes the most grief and suffering for years after eating it, there was silence for several minutes, and one 70 year old man raised his hand and asked, Is it wedding cake? <laughs> no, <it's> a... <laughs> I'll fill you in after service. How about that? <laughs> so let me ask you this morning, how you doing? How you doing? No, really. If uh, I, I'm not asking for my mom's reply, because every time you ask my mom, she just says, I'm just fine. 
I'm going to preach that one day when she goes on to heaven. Because she really will be fine then. But she says it all the time. Well, what if we were truly honest when people asked that question? I think we might totally surprise them if we told them how we really were. I know that we don't want to burden others with our problems, but what if we just laid it out there for them? Pastor Rick, how are you doing? My body hurts. I can't remember where I left my wallet. I'm behind in my preparation for BBS. I'm nervous over the sermon. I could do better as a husband, but other than that, I'm just fine. There. We put a lot of stock, don't we, in how we look outwardly, but are we fine where it matters the most? The criteria in the Israelites going to choose a king They wanted somebody who was a warrior and handsome and rugged. They wanted a winner. They got a guy named Saul, but he strayed from God. What man failed to do in choosing the king, God laid it upon Samuel then as he was about to choose the next king. Samuel was told, he was a prophet, he was told to go find Saul's replacement. And he would be told it was one of Jesse's sons. And so Samuel goes and he All the seven sons start parading before him, Abimadad, uh, Shammah, two of Jesse's sons. Oh, man, they were were fighters. They were warriors. They were good-looking. But listen to what God has told Samuel. God told him, do not look at their appearance nor their height. The Lord does not look at the things man sees, for man looketh at the outward appearance, but God looks at. At the harp. Where is God looking for you today? He's looking at our hearts, isn't he? When God wants to do a checkup on our lives, he goes straight to the heart. We tend to think of the heart as just the seatbed of emotion. We speak of heart throbs or heartaches or broken hearts. We, we say things like, I love you with all of my heart. Jesus speaking in in our beatitude this morning, says, blessed are the pure in heart. And he's thinking differently than just an emotion. In fact, most of the time when the word heart is used in Scripture, it's a metaphor for something deeper than just our emotions. Used almost a thousand times in Scripture, the word heart means the center for who we are. It's the totality of the inner person It's the seatbed of our character, the origin of our desires, our affections, our perceptions, our thoughts, our reasonings, our imaginations, our conscience, our intentions, our purpose, and our faith. Moses declared that we should love the Lord thy God with all of our hearts. Jesus said, where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. Paul prayed that the eyes of our hearts would be enlightened. Bonita, in my verse for life, reminds us to trust in the Lord with all of our hearts. David tells us to hide God's word in our heart. And perhaps the most significant verse about the heart, Paul says that a person is saved by believing in their hearts that God raised Jesus from the dead. We sing these incredible songs about the heart. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. And we talk about having a heart of worship. The heart then is this mysterious spiritual reality that allows us to experience the fullness of life. It includes emotion, but it's not limited to emotion. The heart is the place where we receive all this raw data and then we shape it into judgments. And as one writer aptly put it, our hearts are the truest expression of who we really are. How the heart was viewed at the time of Jesus is actually spelled out in a text from ancient Egypt. Listen to this. The sight, and I quote, the sight of the eyes, the hearing of the ears, the smelling by the nose, they report to the heart. It's the heart which causes every completed concept to come forth, and it is the tongue which announces what the heart thinks. That ancient text and text ought to make us stop and think about the state of our hearts then. Jesus said, the things that come out of the mouth come from the heart. And this is what makes a man unclean, he said. 
For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false testimony, and slander. The state of our heart will determine what we do with a thought. It will determine what we say with our mouth. It will determine how we look at others, what we will do with gossip, whether or not we'll harbor a grudge or give grace, whether or not we'll wallow in self-pity or we'll follow and seek Christ. When Jesus said, blessed are the pure, he means blessed are those hearts who are without any additives, who are unmixed, who are unadulterated, who have no unpure motive with inside of them. Then. Years ago, I think it was ivory soap that was said to be 99.9% .9 pure, which meant that there was still part of that soap that was additive. It wasn't pure. Listen to how James describes heart purity. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. Draw near to God, and he'll draw near to you. Cleanse your hands and purify your hearts, you double-minded. James is telling us that purifying our hearts towards God is getting rid of them of anything that causes us completely not to focus on the Lord. He called that double-mindedness. And it was in the heart of Jesus, too, that he spoke that, spoke that we should seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So let me ask you this morning, how's your heart? Are you seeking first the kingdom of God? Is the Lord Lord over everything in our life? When Dr. Jesus goes to do a checkup on your heart, Will he find additives? Will he find something else that's there? And I believe what Jesus is describing here is nothing short of holiness. It's the central theme, I think, of the entire Sermon on the Mount. Holiness is being set apart from everything and everyone else. It's being fully committed, sold out, submitted and obedient and passionate for the ways of the Lord. Now listen to this. The writer of Hebrews says that without holiness, no man shall see God. Now wait a minute. Didn't we just read here in Matthew 5? Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall what? See God. Doesn't that sound familiar? Without holiness, no man shall see God. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. God is calling us to be holy like he is holy. 1 Peter 1. Be ye holy as I am holy. So how can we have this heart purity? How do we take care of our hearts then? I love what the psalmist says in Psalm 119. He asks the question, how can, he says young man, but this, let me put it in general. How can any of us, how can any of us keep our way pure then? And he goes on to answer it. One of the things he said, we need a change of heart. Jeremiah tells us the truth of our hearts. He says that the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And the real problem, as hard as we might try, we cannot create a pure heart on our own. No amount of changing the outside will ever remove the problem that's on the inside. Let me give you an example. It was a couple of summers ago. It was one of the hottest Julys, and uh, Tegan and I was here. I think Jessica was here, too. And we went downstairs uh, just to get something, I think, in the kitchen. And I was met with one of the worst smells I have ever smelled. Evidently, somewhere along the line, we I wasn't me. Of course it wasn't me. But somebody failed to close the freezer door downstairs here. In, and... Uh, we had a whole bunch of venison meat and some chickens, and they had all thawed. And, of course, they just didn't thaw. They run all over the place. And they made a mess in the freezer and on the floor. It was one of the worst smells. Spoiled meat. So the minute you stepped inside of that room, you wanted to run out. So I got busy and decided I was going to clean up the mess. And so the first thing I did was I got some soap and water and I washed down the outside of that 
of that freezer and I made that thing shine. I took some polish to it and I spiffied it up. I scratched the edges where there was some rust and I painted it a little bit. I really made that freezer shine for certainly that would get rid of the smell inside. But then you open the door. Well, if that didn't work, I thought, okay, maybe that's not what that freezer needed. So I thought, well, maybe I'll throw a party for the freezer. I'll invite other appliances, and we'll bring other appliances in, you know, a stove and a microwave and a blender, and we'll just hang out for a while. Certainly the freezer would feel better then if I did all those things. But then you open the door, and the smell's still there. Well, that didn't work. I know what I'll do. I'll bring down my big screen TV. That's what I'll do. That's what it needed. I'll place it in front of the freezer, and it can watch HBO all night long, and we'll let it listen to some great music or funny comedians. And maybe, maybe that if that doesn't work, I'll get it a date. I know a good Westinghouse freezer, but that might give it a cold shoulder. But anyways, I, I think maybe that might do it. I'll just put up that entertainment value for that freezer, and certainly then it'll be clean, right? Oh, I know what I'll do. I'll bring it to church. That's, oh wait, it was already in church. You see, Pastor Rick, those are some stupid suggestions. What's wrong with your brain? Okay, I'm just... The problem's not on the outside. The problem's here. And until we clean the inside or get the inside clean, the outside's not going to take care of itself. We can, we can dress up the outside all we want. We can make ourselves look good. And what, isn't that what the Pharisees did? And isn't that what, what Jesus says over and over? Good and look at them. They look really good from the outside. They keep all the rules. They look really good. But inside, they're rotten. That's what we have, gentlemen, ladies, friends. We have a rotten inside. That's the whole point here. We can't change the outside. Well, we could try, but it will never change until the inside is changed. That's what David recognized. He recognized his heart was bad. He pleads with God in Psalm 51. He says, create in me a clean heart. He says, I don't want this dirty heart anymore. Look where it's led him. Psalm 51 was written after David was confronted by the prophet Nathan saying, I, everybody saw your affair with Bathsheba. And David says, he goes on to say a, ver a couple of verses later, he says, it's not burnt offerings or sacrifices that bring God the greatest joy. It's the contrite heart. In other words, it's not the outward acts that God is impressed with with you. He wants you to be different from the inside out. That's what truly makes us blessed are the pure in heart. We need a heart change. What can keep us pure? Let's start by giving Him our hearts. Giving Him this heart of stone. Giving Him this heart that is constantly wicked and pulling us away so that we can have a heart transplant. Give Him our hearts so that we can take on His. I like Judge Judy. I watch her quite a bit. She constantly talks about the doctrine of clean hands. And the doctrine of clean hands is simply this. You can't come into court expecting the court to reward you when you come hiding something wrong yourself. So many people come in, they've been in a car accident or something, they're suing the other person, and she'll ask the litigants, did you have car insurance? And the person that's suing them says, no. She says, well, what? You can't expect me to reward you when you didn't follow the right thing. We can't expect God to bless us, welcome us into the kingdom when our heart hasn't been fixed. And the best way is to give Him our hearts this morning. That's what salvation is all about. We exchange the old heart for a new one. The Bible tells us if any man is in Christ, he becomes a new creature Old things pass away. All things become new. A new heart today. Here's something else. The psalmist recognized that purity in the world can only be lived out 
through knowing his word. Psalm 119 says we keep ourselves pure by filling our hearts with God's word. Every day we risk contamination from the world. Every day the enemy is trying to pollute our hearts even more. Every day we face temptation not to follow God's word and to rely upon ourselves. Benita is a nurse. And uh, she knows the danger of contamination. There was no such thing in our household as the three-second rule. <laughs> if it fell to the floor, it went in the trash. There were times I objected. It's just food. It'll be fine. Until one day, a fly got in my sweet tea swimming around in there. Alice, um, well, but you go, well, just fish it out and drink it. <laughs> I'm not. What are, you, what are you talking about? You're always telling us to throw it away. No, just fish it out and drink it. It'll be fine. I'm not drinking that. The fly was swimming around in there. No. She taught me a val valuable lesson. I, I still remember the time we went to eat at a Mexican food place. And she sat down and she got her food. And she went like this. Well, what's wrong? She, she, all she did was point. And there was nice big hair in her taco. I learned my lesson. Send it back. Now, years ago, I probably would have went, what? Ah, just take it off. and It contaminates the whole thing. That's what the psalmist is telling us here. Every verse talking about the word of the Lord in Psalm 119. And it boils down to one thought. Don't neglect the word. Know it. Live it. Be filled with it. Verse 10. Don't let me stray from your word. That's what the psalmist says. Verse 11. Thy word will I hide in my heart that I won't sin against God. One last thing. Guard your heart. That was our verse for life this morning. Psalm 40, verse 23 tells us, Above all, guard your hearts. You talk about a priority. Above everything else, we're to guard our Yes. Above coming to church? Sure. Above singing songs? Above everything else? Yes. The writer is like a grandpa who is summing up his words in a few, word, a few, a few moments here. He's saying, Grandson, Listen to what I'm telling you. This is the most important. And I can remember, I can just vision the grandson leading in, leaning in going, ooh, grandpa's about ready to tell me something that's of utmost importance in life. And grandpa says to the grandson, above all. And the grandson's leaning in going, oh, what's this great valuable truth? And the grandpa says, guard your hearts. You might think as a grandson, is that it? That's it? And then you realize that the one who's speaking it didn't do very good in guarding his heart. The writer here of this great parable, this, this passage of Proverbs 4, is a man named Solomon. And Solomon, in verse uh, in chapter 11 of 1 Kings, we read, Now Solomon loved many foreign women. He had hundreds of wives and hundreds of concubines. And guess what they brought to the marriage? They brought their idols. They brought their gods. And Solomon, who was supposed to be the wisest man in the world, built shrines to worship in. This man of great wisdom is telling his son, grandson, don't do what I did. Guard your heart. Guard it every moment of every day. Heart purity is what God wants and what He sees. And when we have a change of heart and when we are filling our hearts with God's Word and when we are guarding our hearts, it keeps us pure. And the pure in heart, Jesus says here, will see God. They'll see Him at work. They'll see God around them. And they'll see Him forever. One of my favorite Psalms is Psalms 24. And it just says this, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And then it asks the question, who can ascend into the hill of the Lord and who may stand in his holy place? In other words, who of us have the right to see God? Who of us are going to get in? Certainly the givers and servers and 
faithful attenders, certainly those who are moral and have kept the law, right? Those are the ones that have the ticket. But the psalmist says, "Uh uh-uh. Who can ascend to the holy hill? Who can get in? He says the following, those who have clean hands, now watch this, and a pure heart. That's the criteria. Jesus laid it out in a parable, and I just want to close with this. He talked about a parable of a farmer that was sowing seeds. Farmer went out to sow some seeds, and as he's sowing seeds, some of the seeds went on hard ground. Some of the seeds fell on stony ground. Some of the seeds fell where there were thistles, and some of the the seeds fell on fertile soil. The disciples and people really didn't understand. They said, tell us the meaning of the parable. He talked about the seed is the word of God. The types of soil are men's hearts. Some hearts are stone. I mean, they're they're hard. And the seed falls on them and the birds come. They have no time to germinate. There's no place for it to go. The birds come and sweep it away. Some... Seeds fall on stony ground, and they they go down deep, and the soil says, oh, this is really good, but then there's no sunlight that reaches it, and it just dies away. Some seed falls on thorny ground, and and the soil retrieves it and says, oh, this is very good, and it springs up, but then the seed is choked out by the cares and the thorns of life. But some seed falls on fertile ground. The key to the parable is the idea of the soil. And the soil represents our hearts. And so the question that Dr. Jesus is asking this morning, which soil are you? What's the state of your heart? Is it hard? not allowing any part of God's word to get in, germinate? Is it rocky, full of rocks? Is it thorny, full of cares and concerns? Or is it truly a heart that's fertile, (laughs) open, ready, willing to receive his word? Let's stand. How's your heart today? Heads bowed and eyes closed. How's your heart? That's really the question, I think, in this whole beatitude. Blessed are the pure in heart. Is your heart there this morning? Is it fertile, waiting, ready, willing? Or have you allowed the cares and concerns of the world to choke out God's word, his presence? Or are there some stones there that need to be removed today so that the soil can be ready? Or have you become hardened by life? Maybe you need a change. Maybe you need a new heart. How's your heart today? For only the pure in heart will truly see God. They'll see Him at work in this life. They'll see evidence of Him around us every day. And only the pure in heart will one day see God. I'm so glad, aren't you, that God gives us a heart that beats for Him, a heart that's open, a heart that's fertile soil. You can have that kind of heart today. As a psalm we're going to sing, just says, Give me thy heart. Give it to me. Give me your heart. Give me your heart today. Let me do in you what you can't do yourself. You can try to clean up the outside, but until the inside's right, no amount of whatever you do on the outside will ever help. Will you trust Him today to do that? This is an old, old song, not even found in our hymn books, but we're going to try to sing it together. 
And uh, it goes like this. Let's try to sing. Here we go. Give me thy heart, says the Father above. All that thou hast to my keeping resign. Grace more abounding is mine to impart. Make full surrender and give me your heart. Give me thy heart, give me thy heart. Hear the soft whisper wherever thou art. From this dark world he would draw me apart. Speaking so tenderly, give me thy heart. Let's sing the chorus again. Give, give me thy heart. Give me thy heart. Hear the soft whisper wherever thou art. From this dark world he would draw thee apart. Speaking so tenderly, give me thy heart. How's your heart today? Let's do a little checkup. <laughs> Ask yourself that question. How's your heart? Is it a soil that God can really work with? Or are there some things that have got to go? Remember, we can try to clean up the outside. It won't work. It's only when the heart is right that we'll see God. Father, as we close, just wandering throughout the congregation here this morning, heads bowed and eyes closed, just, just want to pray for you. If there's someone that you know, my heart's not where it should be, just pray. Thank you. Anybody else? God bless you. Thank you. Many of you. Thank you. Anybody else? My heart's just not where it should be. I'm one of those soils that's not real fertile right now. Anybody else? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Anybody else? So just wait for a moment. Just between you and God. Thank you. God bless you. Father, you saw the hands. And you know our hearts today. And some of us didn't raise our hands. And you know where we're at. You see everything. But I'm so grateful that no matter... The condition of our soil, we can change. You can change the heart that's within us, taking away those stony heart and taking away the rocky heart and taking away the heart that's full of thistles and cares and concerns and placing within us a heart that truly receives and loves you and wants to serve you. The pure in heart, the heart that wants to be holy and right and separate than the world. Give us that kind of heart, Lord. For only then will we see God. I pray you'll just encourage us as we go. I know the enemy is working hard to contaminate us and get that heart to, to go in a different direction. May, may our thoughts and desires be constantly, Lord, pulling back to you. May our hearts pull us back to you, we pray. I just pray for Vacation Bible School now. Lord, just help every aspect of it, every leader, every group, every spot. May you anoint it with your presence. May we just sense and see an outpouring of your Holy Spirit. May little kids and maybe even some adults come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. May we truly see hearts that are now being changed, hearts that are being replaced. We thank you, Lord, for this event that's going to take place. And I pray you'll give us strength and patience and all the things that we need to go through this week ahead. Thank you for what you've taught us today. Now help us to go and live out the purity of heart in a world that desperately needs to see it. We're so grateful for all you do. We say thank you. We love you, Lord Jesus. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, do you feel like you've been to a checkup this morning? Have you felt prodded and poked a little bit? Good. <laughs> we need that, don't we? We need to be reminded that it's the heart that God's looking at. Not all the outward things that we do, 
but the heart. God bless you as you go.